You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Amy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Monday, April 29th. Good stuff on deck today. And thank you, thank you, thank you to uh, to our listeners who pledged their support of KFUO during share this weekend. It was an outstanding weekend. And, yeah. and all thanks be to God for uh, for providing so that we can continue to carry on this this work of proclaiming Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Sharing uh, great stories, too, the meet the missionary stories and mm-hmm. stories about what's going on around the world that are pertinent to us as Lutherans. And also, um, it, it, you know, one of the topics that, that I'm excited that we get to talk about today, creation as yes. well. We get to cover that quite a bit here. So uh, a really unique opportunity, a conference happening right here in this building. I know. I'm really uh, excited. This summer. Uh, so I'm excited to get to share that with our listeners as well. All the things that we get to share with you here on KFU. It's just a joy to, to get to do that. And thank you for joining us, joining your voice with ours to uh, to help tell that good news of Christ for you. It was outstanding. $123,601 raised this weekend during share And I know that there are more folks who, who support KFUO annually. So I know that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, many more day sponsors still coming in and uh, so yeah, grateful for have, that. Still have a calendar that That's right. needs some more people. Thank you to <laughs> Concordia University of Wisconsin as well for supporting the coffee hour. We're so grateful for your support. Mm-hmm. Visit them at cuw.edu to learn more about Concordia University, Wisconsin. You like learning about creation? I actually do. Me too. (laughs) There's a good opportunity to do that right here at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The Reverend Dr. Joel Heck, Professor of Theology at Concordia University, Texas, and also with the Society of Creation. Joining us this morning, Dr. Heck, thanks so much for being our guest on this Monday of the Coffee Hour. It is a pleasure to be with you, very much so. Share with us, uh, what is the Society of Creation? Uh, The Society of Creation is an organization that another Concordia University System faculty member and I started uh, back in 2011. Uh, Dr. Gary Locklear, computer science instructor at uh, CUW, and I I heard you mention CUW supporting uh, your work at uh, KFUO, so I'm pleased to hear that. That's also my alma mater, but Mm -hmm. Locklear and I started this society intended originally for Concordia University System faculty, but we since decided that's too narrow. We'd love uh, CUS faculty being part of the society, but we extended it beyond that. So anybody in the LCMS, even outside of it, although probably, I don't know, 90% of our members are LCMS people, uh, belong to the society designed to support the historic position of the LCMS on creation, which is that God did it. He did it in six 24-hour days, and he did it in the relatively recent past, thousands of years ago rather than billions of years ago. What are some of those uh, popular theories about the age of the earth? That's probably one of the uh, one of the most common uh, creation related uh, topics that comes up on social media that I see uh, people arguing about <laughs> about the the age of the yeah. earth and arguing not very nicely. Um, but what are some of those those current uh, theories on the age of the earth? Uh, they're basically two theories. One is that the Earth is young, probably under 10,000 years old, and the other basically is uh, that the Earth is four and a half billion years old, that the universe is 14 billion, give or take a few hundred million. I mean, what's a couple hundred million years (laughs) among friends, right? Uh, But that position is held by Darwinists, uh, out-and-out evolutionists, by theistic evolutionists, and also by old Earth creationists. So those three are all in the same camp regarding the age of the Earth. But those of us that uh, not only take the Bible seriously, but also uh, very often literally when it's intended to be conveyed literally like Genesis 1 is. We take it to be thousands of years old. We don't give a specific date on it, but we do think it's less than 10,000 years old. And then, of course, to add to that mix, we also have those who think the Earth is flat. So, But oh, we won't man. get into that. Oh, yeah. You had to bring that up, didn't you? Uh, I've been accused of being a flat Earth person since I believe in divine creation in the recent past, therefore I must also hold this. There's this kind of ridicule that comes from certain segments of not only the 
the secular society, but even from the church. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, I, I saw it looking at the uh, the upcoming conference that um, that you are speaking about Noah, and I, I would love to ask, how is this account of Noah significant in understanding the age of the earth? Now, I don't want to give away everything that you're talking about. You know, we want to spoiler alert, right? <laughs> don't, want to, don't want to ruin your whole presentation, but um, but but enough to help us understand that this is significant. Well, part of it's exegetical in that if I take Genesis 6 to 9 as a historical account of a worldwide flood, uh, we're only a few chapters later than Genesis 1, which I also take to be a historical account. So there, there is a consistency in understanding the book of Genesis as a straightforward historical account of events that happened in the past. Uh, the other reason is geological, and, and Dr. Andrew Snelling will get into that also, because one of his topics is to talk about the, the geology of the flood. But I had the privilege back in 2012 of spending a week on the Colorado River in the Grand Canyon with Andrew Snelling and Terry Mortensen and a bunch of other people, uh, several dozen pastors, theology professors, and the like. And the whole thing about the geology of the Grand Canyon is that the various layers, if you take it from an evolutionary perspective, the various layers that you see as you float down the Colorado River are uh, laid down, according to the evolutionist, over hundreds of thousands and, and even a few million years. And if you are a creationist, you think that this is probably the result of a worldwide flood and that those layers were laid down relatively quickly. And the biggest piece of evidence for that is the flat flatness of the layers of this of this rock, sedimentary rock as you look at the side look up the hillside at the various layers of rock you notice they are extremely flat there's no evidence of erosion between the various layers and from an old earth perspective there if there were hundreds of thousands of years in between the the various layers, there should be uh, a jagged edge to the layers of rock that are laid down, and yet they're exactly smooth, very, uh, very, very flat and horizontal, which is an indication that the layers were laid down flat, fast so that there's no time for this erosion of the wind and the rain and other features of nature to cause a jagged appearance in these layers of sedimentary rock. I want to know if you're doing that trip again because I, I am sad say, I, I missed it. I need a field it. trip. <laughs> that sounds like an outstanding trip. Yes. Well, it happens every summer, and it's the uh, Answers in Genesis people that put it on along with Con- Con- Canyon Ministries, and uh, they invite, uh, I don't know, 25, 30 types of theology people from various persuasions. Some are younger, some are older. If I imagine there are a few others uh, that have different points of view, but they're invited to go along. And that, that that's the Ken Ham organization out of northern Kentucky near Cincinnati, Ohio, that puts this on. And yeah, Mortensen and Snelling are almost always on these trips. That's where I met both of them and had the opportunity to get acquainted with them and then to invite them to this conference in June at the IC. Oh man, that's fascinating. I remember in high school, uh, we had a we had a presentation on on how the flood affected the geology of of the entire planet. It's just it's mind blowing. But that's a different <laughs> that's a whole other episode. Uh, why is it so important for us to understand um, the the age of the Earth to have a proper understanding of the age of the Earth? Well, the age of the Earth, the, the long ages that are proposed by the evolutionists, are absolutely essential to their position in order for Darwinian evolution to have any kind of plausibility whatsoever, because you don't go from molecules to man quickly. Everybody would see that if the universe is thousands of years old, if, if life on Earth is thousands of years old, there's no way a minuscule one-celled creature could evolve into a human being or any other complex creature. So it's absolutely essential for the Darwinian position for there to be millions and billions of years, but it's it's also true, and it lends a certain plausibility to the theory, but it's also true that that's really not enough time for the evolutionary process to take place if it were actually 
true that things evolved. A change, species do change, and new species emerge, and uh, life forms have a tremendous amount of adaptability, but what they don't do is change from one species to another, from one form of life to another, and we, we don't even have any clear evidence of increased amount of information inside the DNA of the individual cells of living creature, which would be absolutely necessary for more complex forms of life to arise. I want to share uh, just the, the de- details about the upcoming conference. We have about a minute and a half uh, for the Society okay. of Creation Conference coming up this summer, uh, June 14th here in St. Louis. Yes, uh, Dr. Morgan, Mortensen, who's done his PhD work in the history of creationary and evolutionary thought is going to talk a keynote address on the age of the earth. I mean, the theme of the conference is thousands, not billions. How old is the earth? Mortensen will be speaking three times, including a public lecture at Concordia Seminary on Saturday night. So anybody can attend that, whether they're signed up for the conference or not. Andrew Snelling is a geologist who uh, is going to talk about the flood and the geology of the flood as well as radiometric dating methods and how reliable they are. Uh, I'm going to give some of my personal experiences about the Grand Canyon and the flood in the Grand Canyon, the age of the earth, and a biblical perspective because of the time I spent on the Colorado River. going to include some video clips of floating down the Colorado River and some of the rapids as well. And I'm also going to talk about Genesis 1, an exegetical approach, an understanding of the text of the first chapter of Genesis. A little bit of it will be indebted to the book that CPH produced a few years back called In the Beginning God, which has been fairly popular and I think somewhat widely read. So I'll be drawing on some of the the biblical text in order to explain why the Missouri Synod for so many decades has been committed to a young earth and a divine creation in 624 hour days you can find information on the upcoming society of creation conference at societyofcreation.org it's pretty easy to remember societyofcreation.org you can find the registration information there as well it's coming up friday june 14th and saturday june 15th it looks outstanding and yeah I am so uh, so grateful that uh, we're going to have this opportunity right here in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Dr. Heck, for being our guest today on The Coffee Hour. It's been a delight to talk with you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you much, very much for having me. Coming up in just a little bit, how do you provide for you know comfort and care, maybe just words of encouragement uh, in the gospel for those who are experiencing cancer? Mm-hmm. We're going to check in with our friends at Phil's Friends and what they're doing and what you can do locally. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth.